Hey everybody, my name is Dr. Scott Giacomucci. I'm the director and founder of the Phoenix Center for Experiential Trauma Therapy in Media, Pennsylvania. I'm board certified in sociometry, psychodrama, and group psychotherapy, and an expert in traumatic stress. I'm really excited that you found this video, and I hope that you find it helpful in your work. So this video is part of an ongoing video series to promote my newly published book, Social Work, Sociometry, and Psychodrama, Experiential Approaches for Group Therapists, Community Leaders, and Social Workers. And this video is going to be devoted to Chapter 4 in the book, which is titled, Social Work Philosophy Encounters Moranian Philosophy. So the first half of this video, we're going to explore Moranian philosophy, and in the second half of the video, we'll be looking at social work core values as they relate to Moreno's philosophy and the practice of sociometry and psychodrama. So in my experience, Moranian philosophy is one of the most misunderstood aspects of psychodrama, and it's one of the least taught aspects of psychodrama. Moreno, at the end of his life, was deeply disappointed and disturbed that his underlying philosophy from which sociometry, psychodrama, and his group therapy approaches emerged had been largely uh, forgotten, whereas his methods uh, had become popular. He really believed that psychodrama and sociometry needed to be informed by the philosophy from which they emerged, and that uh, we need to, to integrate his philosophy and, and teach his philosophy to the next generation. In one of his publications, uh, he writes, this is from 1943, I have had the good fortune to develop three ideas. The first idea, a study of the Godhead, has remained cryptic and misapprehended. The second, a study of man called psychodrama has aroused some hope that man can train his spontaneity to overcome many of his shortcomings. My third idea, the study of society, called sociometry, has given the greatest promise that a measure can be developed for deeper understanding of society and a key to the treatment of its ills. Many of my friends consider these three ideas one apart from the other. In my own mind, however, all of these three ideas are of one piece. One is developed out of the other. The first idea initiates a canon of the universe. The second, a canon of the individual. And the third, a canon of human society. And again, this is a quote from uh, one of Moreno's publications in, the, in 1943. And you can see from this quote, that he believed his sociometric system and his philosophy of the Godhead, his mysticism, was at least as important as psychodrama. Though nowadays psychodrama is much more popular than his sociometric system or his underlying philosophy. So in this video, we're really going to focus on that underlying philosophy. So one of the core ideas about Moreno's philosophy is the idea of the Godhead, which he mentions in that quote. So Moreno, in his uh, early years as a young adult and as a medical student in Vienna, he had studied the different world religions. Uh, he was raised with a lot of influence from Judaism, from his mother. And living in Vienna, he was influenced by Christianity. Uh, he also was deeply influenced by the Greek philosophers, particularly Aristotle and Socrates. And he had studied some of the other world religions. He was captivated by mysticism and spirituality, by uh, tea leaf readings and uh, tarot cards, archetypes. Um, and he had this idea that creativity was one of the common elements of deities across culture. And that if human beings also have this capacity to create creativity, that perhaps human beings are also divine, that human beings are also godlike. And so Moreno believed that there was a, a godhead of sorts, which was a source of all life and all spontaneity, 
and that within each person there also was the emergence of the Godhead, that each person was godlike, that each person was co-responsible for society, that each person had the ability to initiate change within their life, to uh, to be the the director and protagonist within their own life story. And so uh, perhaps this is also one of the reasons why Moreno's philosophy has been less accepted, because it has a, a pretty radical spiritual and mystical assumption that all human beings are God and God-like. Uh, <clears throat> Moreno went as far as attempting to treat all human beings as if they were God. Uh, he would refer to his patients as doctors and really try to dismantle some of the power dynamics that were inherent in psychiatry. Uh, he believed that everybody in the group had therapeutic agency and therapeutic power. And again, this really challenged some of the, the status quo and some of the other prevailing philosophies for psychiatry at the time. Uh, so Moreno's approach to human nature is that human beings are not just biological, psychological, emotional, economical, social creatures, but that first of all, human beings are cosmic beings. And so this is one of the areas where psychodrama is a bit different than other psychotherapies in that it really emerged from Moreno's mysticism. It's one of the few therapies that comes from a religion. Uh, one of the first things that Moreno created was a religion. It was called the Religion of the Encounter. And he founded what was called the House of the Encounter, where he welcomed immigrants and refugees from around the world and, and helped connect them with social support, with legal support and medical support. And most importantly, helped connect them with each other. So uh, Moreno was uh, in some ways even obsessed with this idea of the Godhead, with this uh, idea that all human beings were divine. And this, this philosophy really fueled everything that he did and influenced all of his later ideas. Uh, Moreno believed that within every person was a, what was called an autonomous healing center. He believed that there was a, a core aspect with, within a human being that was self-healing and autonomous, self-driven. And he, uh, really, Zerka writes mostly about the Autonomous Healing Center in reference to Moreno's beliefs. She says that the purpose of psychodrama, the purpose of all forms of therapy, is to help the protagonist clear away some of the barriers to accessing their autonomous healing center. Zerka goes as far as saying that she stopped thinking of herself as a psychotherapist, saying that she doesn't heal any psyches, that it's really the protagonists themselves that are doing the work, who are healing themselves. And Zerka says that she prefers to think of herself as a guide in the wilderness, helping the protagonists to find their own way. So this concept of the autonomous healing center is an important one in psychodrama. Just like the client and the patient has an autonomous healing center, so too does the professional. And that in order to be of most help to our clients as psychodramatists and, and as helping professionals, that we first need to tap into our own autonomous healing center. Uh, in terms of doing our own work, in terms of, uh, you know, a longer timeline of addressing our own core traumas and emotional issues, but also in the moment of the session. That perhaps just before we begin a session or start a group, that we take the time to ground ourselves and to access our own autonomous healing center within, as therapists, as professionals. And this practice, this process is going to look different from person to person. Uh, a simple way of doing it is engaging in a, a little role reversal. Uh, one of the things my trainer taught me to do, uh, Ed Schreiber, 
was to, before I started facilitating a psychodrama group, to pull out an empty chair in my office and to do a short psychodrama vignette with myself. Take two, three, five minutes to speak to myself in the future or to talk to a part of myself that I was warmed up to or, or that related to the group at hand or my own countertransference related to the group, my hopes or goals for the group or the topic for that group. And that by engaging in surplus reality and a role reversal, I was effectively tapping into my own autonomous healing center before going into the group to try to help clients to do the same. And so this is a, a helpful practice that I offer to you as well. Now, just like the therapist has an autonomous healing center, and every individual in the group has an autonomous healing center, we might also consider that the group as a whole has within it, as its own entity, an autonomous healing center. And that part of our task as group therapists, as facilitators, is to help the group as a whole tap into their capacity to heal themselves. In social work with groups, we call this mutual aid, the capacity for each group member to contribute to the healing, the education, the support, uh, the process for every other group member. In Yalom's therapeutic factors of group psychotherapy, he uses the term altruism to describe the same phenomenon, that the group has the power within it to heal itself. And this is one of the unique aspects of both psychodrama practice, psychodrama philosophy, and of social work with groups philosophy. That the primary function of the facilitator is to help the group heal itself. So to help the group tap into its own autonomous healing center. And taking that idea a bit further, if every group has its own autonomous healing center, then perhaps also every community has its own autonomous healing center. Every organization has an autonomous healing center within. And even society as a whole, perhaps, has an autonomous healing center. And when we're working to create healing on a larger scale, in, in the case of macro social work or societry in the Moranian uh, tradition, that our goal might be to help a community, an organization, or all of society tap into its own autonomous healing center, trusting that that entity, that group, community, society, knows what it needs to heal and has the power to heal itself, if only we can help guide them in removing some of the barriers to healing. And so this is a core aspect of Moranian philosophy. Now, another related idea is the, the encounter symbol, which is also core to Moranian philosophy. The encounter symbol, it, it looks like the under armor, the clothing symbol. It's uh, two halves of a circle that intersect with each other. If we were to just pull them apart a bit, we would have a full circle. And so this encounter symbol uh, is it's a symbol that represents or symbolizes another aspect of Moranian mysticism. The encounter symbol is a, a depiction of what Moreno called the first and the second universe. Moreno describes the first universe as the universe where all things are sacred, a universe of formlessness and timelessness, the universe where the Godhead lives, the, the place where uh, of infinite spontaneity and creativity, uh, a place where uh, all living beings emerge from and return to. So this is the first universe. Now the other part of that is the second universe. And Moreno describes the second universe as, as the universe of form, of time, of cultural conserves, which we'll talk about in a, in a, a little bit here. Uh, the second universe is this universe that we interface within, that we live within. The universe of objects, of things. Uh, the universe where we're 
bound by time, by space, by location. And so the encounter symbol is depicting the intersection of these two universes. And at the center, it, this is where we live as human beings, or, or where we could live as human beings, with one foot in each universe. And so um, the Marinian developmental theory, which we'll also touch upon a, a little bit later, uh, also relates to this idea. So this is a, a core aspect, uh, an important piece of Marinian philosophy to understand. Uh, Moreno believed that that psychodrama was a, a portal into this first universe where we could tap into spontaneity, into the divine. And he believed that spontaneity was, was related to God. Uh, in some of his writings, he goes as far as saying that God is spontaneity, period. That uh, psychodrama allows us to tap into this mystical energy, this surplus reality, and in doing so, leave the leave behind the chains and the ways that this second universe bounds us, confines us, and to experience something beyond reality. To uh, bring that experience back into the second universe, to have lasting change within ourself, within the group, within our relationships, and within society. So, uh, this first and second universe concept, uh, you can find quite often in, in Moreno's mystical writing. So if you found this video, I encourage you to check out some of the other videos on my YouTube channel here. I hope that you did find it helpful. Feel free to uh, reach out to me if you have further questions. Um, there's a lot more content about um, all of these ideas within chapter four of my book, Social Work, Sociometry, and Psychodrama. Uh, feel free to uh, subscribe if you want to be updated about uh, future videos. Subscribe to the channel here or to leave a comment below uh, about what you found helpful or what you'd like to learn more about for future videos. Uh, we really take some of your comments and feedback into consideration when thinking about uh, future videos that we create.